Welcome back. Next, let's take a look at creating lists in a little bit more detail. Um, so first of all, um, we can have empty lists in queue um, and that's def defined by just these empty brackets. So if I have this, this is an empty list. And if I run type on this, it's also worth noting um, we get zero H returned. So um, we either have a general list or we've got an empty list. So that's just another variation on um, when zero H is returned. So why is this important? So this empty list, we can actually create lists using this empty list. So for example, if I have the atom A, which as we know is a singular value, um, I can show that by running uh, type on A, which is minus seven H. Um, now, if I use this comma operator, so the concatenation operator, um, and I say join to my list uh, or my empty list A, let's see what happens. So I see this comma in the front has appeared. And when you see something like this with the comma in the front, what it basically means is you've got a list of one element long. Um, and running type on that, you see the negative had, has disappeared. Um, Another way to do that is by using the word in list. So for example, if we ran in list on, oh, in list on um, A, or we did type uh, in list on A, you'll see that that I put the exact same thing. So you can use either of these options. Um, just to be careful when using in list, if you do something like running in list twice, um, you can see it, it kind of looks like um, it's reverted back to a singular atom, um, whereas joining on two empty lists out in front maintains that list structure. Um, that's not actually the case. When we run type in front of this um, and type in front of this, you'll see running in list twice actually creates a general list. So it adds a level of nesting um, to your data structure. So that might be a behavior that you don't desire. Um, so just something to watch out for. And if you want to maintain that list structure, um, it can be sometimes preferable to use this method. Um, but either will um, create a list from an atom. Um, so let's try that with an exercise. So have a go. You can create a, a single item list of the symbol here on my own. Um, okay, and once you're happy with that, let's move on and look at generating lists with a few handy keywords. So I did already mention this till keyword. So let's have a quick reminder of that. So till 10 will basically create a list from zero up to nine. Um, so it's got 10 elements long. And depending on the amount of elements I want, I can change the the, the number I pass in afterwards. Um, if I didn't want my list to start from zero, if I wanted to start it um, from one, for example, I could add one to that list. And you see now it goes from one to 11. Um, and so on. Um, another one to be aware of is this role or deal operator, which is basically this question mark. So you can see here, I'm creating a list L and I'm using this role operator. So let's just take a more in uh, simpler look at that. So if I do, let's do three, role five, for example, it basically creates a random list um, from zero up to the number you're passing it here on the right hand side. So three is the number of elements you want returned in your list. And then five is the size or the number of the, the maximum number you have in your list. So you can see every time I roll it, I'm getting a different number back. Um, and that's exactly what um, we're doing here with this L. So we're creating 20 elements from zero to 300 in this list L. Um, just to note on when you see um, operators like this used, a very, very useful page to go to on your reference card is this overloaded glyphs. Um, so a lot of times in Q, these alpha, non alphabetic keyboard, ca keyboard characters are overloaded, meaning they have a lot of different functionalities. Um, so I find this page super useful. So if I see someone's used a question mark, for example, I can come to here and I can say, right, what kind of functionality were they intending? Um, so if it looks like this, there was a numeric on the left and numeric on the right. Um, I can pretty safely assume that they're using this functionality rather than, for example, you know, trying to do something like this. So that's um, something I get asked a lot in training. How do I know, you know, which functionality of the question mark is actually happening? And this here example column um, will be will be your best friend in determining that. Um, so we'll be coming across all of these other ones as we go through. But 
Um, that's something very useful when you're looking at someone else's code and you're not quite sure of the functionality. Um, so we are looking at roll and deal. That's our random generator. Um, we're just showing that with the functional form here. So we've got two different options here. You can either put the question mark in front with square brackets, so our functional form, or you can use the infix notation. So you put the five on the left and then 10 on the right. Um, so you can see there just, you can keep running those and you'll get different numbers returned. Um, these are creating longs because we've passed in um, 10 here. If we wanted that to be floats, you could either have dot zero or just dot. Um, and you'll see, I now get the decimal points and decimal places afterwards. Um, so depending on what kind of type you want, you can use that. Um, and then one more thing to note when using roll, um, if we put a minus out in front of the left-hand parameter, what happens is it will make sure that list you're getting back is a unique list. So for example, if I run this, you see above here, I got two sixes. And then in this example, I had two fours and two nines. Down here, none of the values are repeated. Um, but yeah, we have a question here. What would happen if we did um, minus 11 on a list that was only 10 long? So let's just, we can run minus 11 here and see. Okay. We ended up getting a length error and that's saying the, num the number of elements you've requested is longer than um, you know, the maximum. Um, so we've looked at when our right-hand side of the argument is um, you know the the list that we want to create from and this is it's it's going to be the the maximum value in the list um we can also have a second option we could pass the right hand argument um as a list so for example if i have one two three here my list is always going to be from the values one two or three um similarly we can do this with symbols um and we're also doing it here with a date so i'm doing um some date in 2011 and then i'm subtracting um, three here till three. So what happens when we do that? Um, you see we're generating dates instead of symbols or numerics here. Okay, um, so have a go at the exercise. Um, so we're just asking here to generate a, a list of 100 random numbers between 10 and 20. Um, and then finally, just to finish off this section, um, we're just reiterating here um, about this comma operator. So we did see this earlier. So this is just kind of repetition, um, but we can join lists together using comma. So for example, um, when it's a simple list, we could do that. Um, we don't need to have it, but we can have it if we want. Um, but when we have um, a non-uniform type, um, you can see that we can join this together and it's gonna output um, vertically, which means we have a general list or a mixed list. Okay, so, I will see you in the next video.